Hi, Otto here for Bavarian Autosport. Today, we're going to be replacing the crankcase ventilation check valve on this BMW 740 V8. Now, all of the V8 models have these check valves, the M60 and M62 models, so generally up through the mid-2000s. When we get to the new N62 models, those are totally different. They don't use this valve. This is the check valve. It mounts to the manifold in this position. This is the inside of the valve, inside the intake manifold. It actually mounts on the back of the intake manifold under this cover back here. And there's a rubber diaphragm here which ruptures that will cause vacuum leaks and oil burning. We'll show you how to replace this. The parts needed are just the valve itself, the gasket for the rear, and a specialty tool we've uh, devised to be able to replace the valve without replacing the whole manifold, which is the way a dealer would do this. We have a ratcheting box end wrench here with a short Torx bit. I've temporarily glued it in with a, just a drop of super glue, and that'll help keep it from dropping and losing the bit. This is a Torx T30 bit. And we'll be using the flexible hose clamp driver as well. These other gaskets you see here are for the throttle body and the throttle body mounting plate, which we might have to remove if we have problems with the two pipes that connect to these fittings here. Now, the first thing we do in this job to access the back of the intake manifold is to remove this upper uh, manifold cover. Very simple on the V8. Push these release buttons, and those are all loose. We pull the cover off, and we'll set it aside. Now you can see one of the gaskets. This stuck behind. This is this gasket right here for the other side. We'll just set all of that aside for now. Now, we're working right here. I can put my hand on the cover, and I'm not sure if you can see it in the video frame. This is the cover. It's positioned on the back of the engine this way. So it's sitting right down there. The top right here is right here on this. So we'll be removing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven volts. We've got an O-ring to a tube connection here, which is down beside the bottom of the manifold. Inside the manifold, we've got a tube that connects here and here. We also have hoses here and here. So we'll be taking care of all those connections. We've got some other vacuum connections here as well, and we'll get to work on that. All right, now, first thing we're going to disconnect, you're looking at the back of the intake manifold here. This is the windshield cowl. This is the last runner on the intake manifold. Firewall is back here, and the cover is here. Again, this is the cover. It's positioned down like this. These two spots here, we're pulling off these vacuum hoses right now. These yellow clamps keep the hoses secured. We just pry them off back toward the hose. And then we can pull the hose off like that. There's the yellow clamp. Notice that this one on the driver's side this tab is pointing down. We'll pull that off so we don't lose it and set it aside. Now you see the other one doesn't have a split at the top. It's actually positioned opposite of this one. You might say upside down. Again, we just pry it off toward the rear. And then we can pull the hose off. You can see this one on the passenger side, the tab is toward the top, and there's the vacuum hose. Now, in addition to those, looking at this cover, we have a hose here, which is this hose. It's called, this is the sucking jet pump hose. Here, and 
the rest of our connections here. Then we get to all of the bolts. So the jet pump is connected right down here and has a crimp clamp just like this one. So we will cut that one off and use a regular hose clamp to put it back together. We'll get ready for that right now. Now, we mentioned we need to remove this hose from the nipple. The clamp is down here and we have to cut the clamp off or twist it off. I'm going to remove this one because it's easier to get to and we'll pull the valve with the hose attached and take care of the hose later. So we're going to use some diagonal cutters on the clamp and we're going to pinch and twist and we'll unlock the clamp eventually by doing this. Now I've worked at this clamp with the diagonal cutters twisting and cutting and you can see I broke that top section. Now we'll just pry the rest of the clamp apart. We'll get the end off here, get a screwdriver under it, loosen it, and pull the clamp off. When we go back together, we're going to do the same thing with the uh, clamp down here once we have it apart. When we go back together, we'll just use new regular hose clamps on these. Now we'll loosen the hose at the barb here. Okay, now you can see I've got the hose loosened and I'm able to pull the barbs out. You can also see this hose is a little bit torn up. It was awful, uh, let's just call it stuck on the barbs on the fitting. Uh, we're going to want to replace this hose here, so we'll be prepared for that. Now we're ready to undo the bolts and remove the actual cover. We're now ready to remove the cover's mounting bolts. You can check the bolt locations by looking at the new cover. The cover is positioned like this. We have the three bolts along the top and the four bolts along the bottom of the cover. Here's the tool that we'll use to remove the bolts. This is a quarter inch hex drive T30 bit and a quarter inch ratcheting box wrench. I've used a small drop of super glue to secure the bit in the wrench. In using the tool, make sure that you keep the bit fully and squarely inserted into the female bolt head. We don't want to strip out the Torx bolt head. Okay, now I am on the last bolt here. I've removed the, this one, this one, and this one across the bottom. And of course we did the top three already, those are easy. I'm on this last one in the lower corner here. This is one of the easier ones as well. Quite frankly, these two are the ones you're gonna have trouble with and you have to be creative. You'll be down there with both hands trying to get the bit on and secure and turn your wrench just enough to loosen them and then trying to work them out uh, once they're loose. Uh, you have to use the wrench on most of it. So if the camera can see the wrench down here, I'm on the last one. I've got it loosened to the point where, there I am, I can turn it, the bolt with two fingers, to finish pulling it out here. Yeah, I'm going to get my hand in the other way. It's going to cover the frame, but I think I can get the, the uh, bolt better, yes. Between my index and second finger, I can turn the bolt. And here we come. And there we go. So that's my last bolt. Now that we have all of the screws removed, the cover is ready to be removed. Now we don't just yank the cover off. There are a couple of things to pay attention to. This is the inside of the cover. Remember it's mounted down like this. We have a tube going through the inside of the intake manifold that pushes over this rubber grommet. Another tube that butts up against this grommet. And this is 
on the exterior from the cover. There's a tube running along the side of the intake manifold that pushes over this nipple and grommet. So we have to be in consideration of all of those. The main thing is the tube that's inside the manifold that pushes over this grommet, <coughs> excuse me, and the one here, we don't want to pull those tubes rearward and dislodge them at the other side of the intake manifold. So we're going to be careful of that as we pull the cover off. Now, I'm going to just get, get it moving here. Now, I'm going to look. If I had a light, I could see in here. Now, that moved before I was actually ready to. I was going to put a screwdriver in and touch the tube to make sure the tube stayed while I pulled the cover. Now at this point here, I can tell it is loose from the tube. The tube stayed in place. And here we are. Here's the cover. Here's the nipple we were concerned about the tube being on. And here's the other nipple here that the tube is down along the side of the manifold right down here. Both of these came off cleanly. What we would want to do as well as you're gently pulling the cover back and wobbling it like I did. That helps it release from this nipple, the tube. But we could stick a screwdriver down between the manifold and the tube and force the tube forward while we're pulling the cover off. If that tube comes off inside here from the other end of the manifold, we'll have to pull the front cover of the manifold off to remount the tube. Now that's not a big deal and it's actually very easy to get the front cover off, but it is another procedure we'd have to perform. In this case, both this tube and this one stayed in place and we're all set to fully just remove the cover. Now, here's the hose where we had undone the clamp on this end and this is the other factory clamp on this end. We'll transfer this hose to the new uh, cover and install it the same way with the hose on so it's easier to uh, not have to worry about getting at this hose clamp here on the new one. All right, now that we have the cover off, there's a gasket on the back of the manifold here. We're going to use a screwdriver, feel for the gasket groove, just kind of loosen the gasket up. It's going to be stuck in there. I'm going above and below the gasket and just loosening it up on both sides so that I can pick it out. There we go. So there's the gasket and I'm going to carefully pull it the rest of the way out. Now, this one is moderately pliable and is coming out okay. It would not be uncommon for this to be crystallized and hard as well. Look at all the oil here from uh, blow-by, uh, from the uh, vent valve being faulty. This is all inside the intake manifold. So we will install the new gasket. <coughs> 